Hey, this is Sam, and you're watching Print Print and Peachy. And I'm so sorry that I haven't been making videos lately. It's the summertime, and I'm kind of getting preoccupied with that. And I just had my birthday weekend, so I've been a little bit busy. But this is a video I've been wanting to make for a really long time because I think it'll be really helpful for people out there. A lot of you, if you're into um, YouTube video, um, beauty videos, have probably already seen uh, Lisa Eldridge's video on foundation for very fair uh, skin and it was a really great video but I think that it it kind of focused on pale skin that have a pink base to it and for me and I think a lot of people out there there is a lot of people who have more neutral um, base complexions or even like a little bit of like a golden base to their skin as well so I kind of wanted to just showcase some of the foundations that I really like and that are not pink. So pale but not pink. You, you know, Sam, you, you have pretty pale skin but how pale are you? Because sometimes the camera can kind of play with color a little bit. So what I'm going to be doing is putting on my blog a post of a swatch on the inside of my arm. Obviously, you don't get any sun really on the inside of your arm, so that would be like the palest part of me. And then you can kind of gauge between that to see like how that would suit your complexion. And for, because <laughs> I wanted to be really like helpful and kind of have a reference for everyone. So I went to MAC and I actually got a sample of the NC15, which is in fact too dark for me. Um, and I put it right beside all of the different samples that I'm going to be posting. So you can kind of see how that ranges in comparison. But if you think that getting a foundation that from the drugstore that will be light enough for you is a joke, then you're probably um, pale like me. If you know that all of the foundations, even in Sephora, are sometimes too dark for you, then you're probably pale like me. Uh, Makeup Forever N15 is way too pink, then you're pale like me because I'm not pink based. Even Stila being too dark, then you're definitely pale like me. So <laughs> that's the reference to see if you're pale like me. Getting started, I want to show um, the NARS Sheer Glow. This is in Siberia, and I think this retails for about $55 Canadian at Sephora. And why I like this foundation is because it gives good coverage, sheer to medium coverage. It's nice and hydrating, so if you're pale and have dry skin, which I think is a very common combination, then um, this would be great for you. And they also make it in a matte version as well. And the concealer from NARS that um, kind of goes with it is also not pink based, so that is great as well. Okay, so the second product I want to talk about is a great option for people who have troubled skin. Two ago, I went to a cottage and I got a horrible skin like reaction. I think I had an allergic reaction to something. And that kind of like, with all the different stuff I had to take to get the reaction down, it somehow triggered um, really bad acne. So I used to have really bad skin and I had to go to a dermatologist for a year or so. Um, just to kind of get rid of it, but through high school and typically I don't break out. But if you have troubled skin, um, this is a great product as well. This is Cover FX, and the shade that I use is E0, and it's made in Canada, but you can get it um, worldwide. And it looks like this. They also have um, a lighter kind of weight formula, which is better if you don't need so much coverage. And this can be used as a concealer as well, so that is really good. And it comes in, E0 is a neutral, lightest shade that's neutral. And they also make the lightest shade in a pink base and a yellow base as well. So that is really good. Like, I feel like they match everyone's skin type. They're not so expensive, actually, for what you're getting and how much product you're getting. Um, and they don't have parabens, and they are also SPF. Something else I wanted to mention that I'm actually pretty into makeup ingredients. So all the products that I'm showing you, like they're not going to be 100% natural, obviously, but they will be. Um, 
As well as the cover effects, they also make a powder effects that looks like this. And it's just like a compact powder as well. And that is also in E0. And they make concealers as well. So if you have, if you need a little bit more coverage and you're really fair, then that is a great brand to look into. And I think they also have like little kits to get into the brand um, that include like brushes and all those different things too. So it makes it a little bit better for price wise. Okay, so the next product that I wanted to mention is the Bourjois Healthy F um, Healthy Mix Serum Foundation. And this is in shade 51. And I actually got this foundation because I did see it on Lisa Eldridge's um, video for Very Pale Skin Foundation. Though, I have to say that this is definitely a summertime foundation for me. Like, I can pull it off and it doesn't look too dark. But it doesn't give me, like, it's not exactly a fair skin look. It's like a little bit of a glowy look on me. So I want to have a little bit more of a pinch of color, then I'll go for this. And it's a good summertime foundation because it really stands up well against um, heat as well. See, for this one here, this one's great for winter because it's definitely very, very fair, which I will be more in the wintertime. And it's hydrating. Well, this one has more of a matte finish, like a semi-matte finish, and this one has more of like a glowy finish, like a dewy look which is good for our dry, dry, dry Canadian winters. Okay, so the final product I want to talk about is a BB cream. And I kind of, I was kind of getting frustrated with not being able to buy a lot of products and finding the kind of finish I want and the product I want. Tinted moisturizers just never work. They always come in like light, medium, dark. And I'm never light. I am always like the lightest, lightest, lightest. So I was kind of getting frustrated, but then at work, um, I get a lot of clients in, and um, I think with like Asian culture, it's very like desirable to be very light. And so I kind of got that thinking, like, okay, well, you know, maybe I should look into some of the more Asian products because they're already making foundations that are very light because that's like what's trendy and like considered beautiful in their culture while in western culture everyone wants to kind of be tan so I was like oh okay like let me kind of look into this BB cream kind of situation because I feel like BB creams like the North American ones that you see that are being advertised now are really just more like tinted moisturizers with a primer and higher SPF in it um, they're not exactly like the BB creams um, from from Asian countries so I did a lot of lot of research because I know that there's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of BB creams out there and I ended up settling for a brand called Misha and I got the smaller um, kind of tube, this is a 20 gram tube and I was also really concerned on ingredients as well because the packaging is in Korean and surprisingly I don't speak Korean and so um, I wanted to kind of know what ingredients were going into the products and I wanted to make sure that it was paraben free. And there are a few other uh, paraben free lines of BB creams that you can find, but this one was really good because the Misha brand was highly recommended, especially on YouTube, and they do one that is the perfect cover. And this is the Real Complete because the Real Complete is a line from Misha that is seven free so it's free of like the top seven most um, kind of irritating or harmful ingredients and it also has certified organic um, ingredients in it as well and this is paraben free as well and it is an SPF 25 and it looks like this and I really really like it like the coverage is really really skin like and it also is buildable as well. Like you can just kind of put it all over your face and then if you have to cover like a little blemish or something like that, you can take a little on your finger and just like pat it in. And it does build and the coverage still looks very skin-like. It doesn't look cakey and you can kind of increase the coverage. And considering how affordable this is, like this tube here, I know it's not gonna last me that long because it's only 20 grams, but it was like $14 with shipping. So, like, that's kind of crazy, right? And 
this one here, though I love NARS Sheer Glow and love NARS Sheer Matte, was $55. So you have to kind of be like, oh, you know, what would you, what would you kind of prefer to spend? So that is a really good option, and I got this in the number 13 uh, light, milky, milky light beige, I think it's called. But yeah, uh, some people on Facebook were saying that the 23 is the lightest shade, but from the swatches I've seen, I kind of looked into it, that the 13 is actually the lightest shade. And out of all the foundations I've shown you, this one kind of just like melts more into my complexion. It does go on for some reason with a little bit of like a gray twinge, though like within a few seconds of being on your skin it warms up and it doesn't look gray at all. And you can kind of, I'm wearing, the, this is the one I'm wearing today, you can kind of see the, the coverage and the effect of it. It has kind of a semi-matte finish, so it's great if you have oily skin, and if you have dry skin you might want to put a little bit of a hydrating primer with it and um, maybe not set it with such a heavy powder. So those are kind of like the five favorite foundations that I wanted to kind of mention to you guys because I know how hard it can be if you're pale but not pink. Um, I feel like some of them are almost look like it's literally pastel pink in the bottle. It's very frustrating. I'm like, my face is not pink. Um, though there's nothing wrong if you are pink based. Like that's a really nice kind of like alabaster skin tone. It just, if you put pink on light skin, it just makes your face look very um, abnormal, like you're kind of flushed, because you can tell from your neck that it's just not matching. Other products I still wanted to mention is if you still, through all these kind of suggestions, can't find something that works with your skin type and tone, then I have a couple other kind of like fixer products. So if you have dry skin, like with the cover effects, um, if your skin's very dry, it doesn't blend so well, and I can imagine that if your skin is very oily, it would probably also be difficult to kind of almost like sit on top of your skin and maybe slide around a little bit. So they have a primer, the Skin Prep, which is really, really nice if you have dry skin. It just kind of smooths everything out. It works for other uh, foundations as well. So that's something if you have extra dry skin, because my skin in the winter is dry, but in the summer it's more just normal. And then, if you have more like textural issues or want to turn any of the foundations I've mentioned into more of a matte finish, um, then the Porefessional is a really great product as well. And when I was kind of talking to the brand rep about it, they recommended that uh, you actually put a little bit of your foundation and the Porefessional on your hand and mix it together and then apply that as one kind of base on your face and it gives a really nice smooth finish and it kind of takes away um, one step of your makeup routine. So that's great if you have textural um, issues or if you are very oily. Now this is a product I really wanted to mention because I do like it though it is a little bit pink on me. This is the Makeup Forever Face and Body and the number 38 is a really nice, very light shade, though it is the tiniest bit pink. But because it's such a lightweight, water-based foundation, it is great for maybe some of you would find that the 51 from um, Bourjois or even the NARS Siberia is too yellow on you because you're more of a neutral base. You're not pink, but you're more neutral. Then putting a little bit of this into it is really really great it definitely tones down the yellow a little bit and kind of gives you more of a neutral finish yeah so that was my video on my top recommendations for pale but not pink foundations and I hope you like it and if anyone else has any other questions about you know pale skin and makeup tips and those kind of things and sunscreen and all the things that um, pale girls <laughs> kind of go through, then uh, please leave it in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them as best as possible. So yeah, uh, have a great day, and check out my blog post for the swatches.